Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Fahri Sakimi from AP 1146C. Today our group will talk about determination of contractor. The meaning of determination relates ending contractor's employment under the contract. Secara ringkasnya ianya bermaksud kontrak yang ingin ditamatkan antara kontraktor dengan klien disebabkan oleh percanggahan dalam kontrak. Sekarang, now, I will talk about clause 50, suspension of work yang bermaksud penangguhan kerja. Under clause 50, there are clause 50.1, suspension and resumption of works iaitu penangguhan dan penyambungan dalam uh, dalam melakukan kerja. Dalam clause ini, ianya mengatakan bahawa SO mempunyai hak untuk mengarahkan kontraktor untuk menangguhkan kerja. Selepas mendapat arahan, kontraktor perlulah mengambil tindakan dengan memastikan site tersebut tiada kosakan ataupun kehilangan sebelum meninggalkannya. Dan dalam masa yang sama, dalam waktu tempoh penangguhan tersebut, kontraktor, kontraktor juga perlulah menjalankan tugasnya di mana tugas tersebut tidak terkesan dengan arahan penangguhan tersebut. Dan setelah selesainya penangguhan tersebut, SO juga berhak untuk mengarahkan kontraktor menyambung kerja tersebut dan kontraktor dan kontraktor juga perlu memastikan agar tiada kosakan ataupun kehilangan dalam tempoh waktu penangguhan itu. Next is clause 50.2, extension of time. Kontraktor boleh meminta extension of time jika dapat berlakunya masalah yang tidak dijangka oleh kontraktor tersebut walaupun kontraktor tersebut telah mengikut arahan daripada SO dengan betul. Kontraktor, juga, kontraktor tidak boleh meminta extension of time ataupun gagal meminta extension of time kerana disebabkan oleh tidak mengikuti clause 50.1 iaitu memeriksa dahulu jika uh, terdapat kehilangan ataupun kosakan sebelum meninggalkan site tersebut atau dalam kata lain tidak mengambil langkah-langkah yang sepatutnya. Jika tempoh penangguhan tersebut melebihi 12 bulan, pihak ketiga boleh berbincang, berbincang sesama mereka sama ada ingin menamatkan kontrak ataupun melanjutkan lagi tempoh waktu penangguhan tersebut untuk jangka masa yang lama. Last for under clause 50 is clause 50.3, consequence of mutual termination. Jika kontrak ditamatkan di bawah clause ini, clause 51.1C I boleh diaplikasikan di mana clause tersebut akan diterangkan kemudian serta pembayaran juga wajib dilakukan di mana segala kos yang telah ditanggung oleh kerajaan dan juga kontraktor boleh diklaim berdasarkan clause 54 yang juga akan diterangkan kemudian. Next for the new clause is clause 51, invest and costing courses of default by the contractor yang bermaksud kejadian yang berlaku akibat kelalaian kontraktor itu sendiri. Di bawah clause 51 juga terdapat clause 51.1 iaitu default of obligation section A events of default. Antara contoh kejadian yang boleh diberi adalah kontraktor gagal menjalankan tugas mengikut syarat kontrak. Dan jika perkara itu berlaku, kerajaan boleh mengambil tindakan dengan memberi notis secara bertulis kepada kontraktor dan kontraktor perlulah memperbaiki kesilapan tersebut dalam masa buat, dalam masa 14 hari. Next is termination. Jika kontraktor gagal untuk berbuat demikian ataupun gagal untuk memperbaiki kesilapannya dalam waktu yang telah ditetapkan, kerajaan mempunyai hak untuk menamatkan kontrak bersama kontraktor tersebut dengan memberi notis kepada kontraktor. Next is section C, consequences of termination yang bermaksud akibat daripada kontrak ditamatkan. Jika kontrak ini ditamatkan berdasarkan clause 51.1b tadi, kontraktor perlulah menghentikan segala operasi kerja pada ketika itu dengan serta-merta dan meninggalkan site tersebut dalam keadaan yang bersih serta membawa keluar barangan pribadi serta pekerjanya daripada kawasan site itu. Atau kerajaan juga boleh menamatkan semua kontrak uh, pihak ketiga 
dan menyerahkan kerja itu kepada pihak kerajaan itu sendiri. Atau dengan cara lain, pihak kerajaan juga boleh menyerahkan tugasan itu kepada pihak ketiga yang sepatutnya untuk menyiapkan kerja tersebut. Tetapi, kerajaan tidak akan bertanggungjawab ke atas kos barang yang perlu ditanggung kerana kerajaan telah pun membayar kos tersebut kepada kontraktor. Tetapi, kontraktor tersebut telah gagal untuk membayar kos tersebut kepada pihak ketiga. Seterusnya, kerajaan juga boleh menggunakan performance bond ataupun boleh meminta daripada kontraktor jika mempunyai sebarang kosakan ataupun kehilangan yang disebabkan oleh kontraktor itu sendiri. Dan kerajaan juga boleh menjalankan kerja tersebut dengan sendiri ataupun menyerahkannya kepada orang lain. For the last clause is 51.2 General Default. Section A, Events of Default. Di, di bawah section ini, ianya memberitahu jika pada bila-bila masa sahaja dalam waktu tempoh kontrak tersebut, jika tiba-tiba kontraktor menjadi muflis ataupun boleh dikatakan sebagai bankrupt, pihak kerajaan mempunyai hak untuk menamatkan kontrak bersama kontraktor tersebut dengan memberi notis kepada kontraktor itu. For section B, Consequences of Termination. Jika berlakunya keadaan di dalam kontrak yang seperti disebut tadi iaitu Clause 51.2 di mana contohnya kontraktor tiba-tiba menjadi bankrupt. Clause 51.1C1 dan 51.1C2 boleh diaplikasikan di mana kontrak akan ditamatkan dan kontraktor perlulah meninggalkan saib tersebut dalam keadaan yang segera dan sebagainya. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Aiman bin Kamaluddin You can call me Aiman And I would like to explain about Determination under termination Termination can be divided into two Which is termination for the own benefit on behalf client And termination based on contractor's performance Firstly, contract Termination based on benefit on client behalf. You can refer to PWD 203A clause 52.1 that explain that explain contractor must receive a written notice by government at least 30 days. This termination happen because there's a changes in national interest. There is changes in national policy and national security purposes. Second, determination based on client, based on contractor performance. This termination occur when the contractor performance is bad due to the corruption unlawful illegal activity that break the contract and the and the, the determination must be done without prejudice to any other right of the government okey kat sini termination yang kedua ni dia menceritakan yang kontraktor ni dia buat hal dalam kontrak dia tak kisahlah kontraktor tu sebagus mana pun Asalkan kontraktor tu langkah syarat-syarat kontrak Kontraktor itu wajar digugurkan Dan seterusnya tak, Tanpa ada side effect dekat kerajaan Contohnya kontraktor ni bagus, dia boleh buat kerja hebat Dia banyak supplier yang boleh buat murah Benda tu tak boleh mikir sebab apa? Sebab benda ni yang akan memusnahkan negara Okay Kedua Consequences to the Termination From PWD 203A I I found out Two major consequences That 
usually happen firstly the contract must apply clause 51.1.c.1 which means the contractor must take out all of his personal equipment and worker out from the site within the given time period dekat sini sebenarnya yang dah cerita sebelum ni contractor akan terima surat yang dikeluarkan oleh government yang yang menyatakan contractor akan terminate pada sekian-sekian tarikh jadi contractor ada masa at least 30 hari untuk kosongkan site tersebut daripada barang-barang tersendiri barang-barang sendiri macam excavator, site office semua tu next government should cover all the losses cost damage and expenses due to the due to the termination this is only apply for the second situation of the termination which is termination based on contractor performance you can refer pwd 203a clause 53.2 for extra explanation dekat sini government dia patut cover all the damages losses yang contractor telah buat sebab apa contractor punya performance ni teruk kita pergi ke the slide seterusnya based on PEM 2006 clause 26.1 which explained about default by the contractor this clause explained about employer does not pay the certificate amount due on time what contractor must do is firstly contractor must issue the notice within 7 day of the due time second the notice must be served with registered post third if employee still does not pay the certificate amount contractor may determine his employment under the contract by registered post okey apa yang perlu contractor buat sekiranya tak dapat duit yang dia claim dekat contractor dekat client yang pertama contractor perlu menghantar surat ataupun email kepada klien a uh, sekurang-kurangnya 7 hari selepas tarikh yang ditetapkan untuk dapatkan duit tersebut atau selepas itu selepas hantar notis jika klien masih tidak membayar kontraktor kontraktor ada ada peluang untuk ada pilihan untuk menentukan nak keluar daripada kontrak tu ataupun masih stay dalam kontrak tu for extra explanation for extra understanding you can refer to burden rb ltd versus swansea corporation 1957 for extra information next we move to clause 54.0 which explain about payment open suspension and termination on national interest if the contract were terminate based on clause 50 and 51 which means termination not due to the contractor illegal activity the amount covered to be claimed following to included first value of work done until the date of termination second amount payable in respect of any primary item so far as the work of or the services of the item is used third cost of order and paid material by contractor until the date of determination and more okay kat sini clause ni menceritakan amount amount yang contractor boleh claim sebelum dia break the contract okay Antara yang contractor boleh claim dekat klien ialah kerja yang telah dilakukan semasa ataupun sebelum tarikh termination. Contohnya, contractor dah siap frame sebanyak 100% tapi masih belum claim sebelum tarikh termination. Jadi, pada tarikh termination tu, contractor boleh claim dekat klien kerja-kerja untuk frame sebanyak contohnya 
400,000 kerja yang terlakukan. Yang kedua, B ni dia terangkan amount of payable respect primary item. Contohnya dia gunakan concrete mixer sepanjang tempoh penggunaan itu kontraktor boleh claim selagi mana concrete mixer itu digunakan. Dan kos barang yang telah dibeli dan telah dibayar oleh duit kontraktor sendiri untuk kepentingan satu projek. Contohnya kontraktor dah beli enforcement bar dan dah telah bayar. Tapi pada seminggu selepas itu kontraktor kena terminate. Jadi kontraktor tak boleh claim ah uh, barang enforcement bar tu daripada klien. Tapi enforcement bar tu jadi hak milik klien. Next. PEM 2006 determination under clause 26.2 determination right and liabilities upon determination by contractor. What uh, the right and liabilities that contractor must do? First, remove all personal properties from the site such as temporary building and plant. Second, payment for work done like value of work complete at the date of termination and work not complete but had started at the date of termination. Third, cost of material purchased by the contractor until the termination date. Fourth, reasonable cost of removal such as temporary building and plan. Dekat sini, based on PEM 2006, determination right and liabilities upon contractor hampir sama dengan PWD 2003A yang mana contractor mesti mengklearkan barang dia daripada slide daripada site sebelum tarikh determination yang kedua contractor juga boleh claim segala kerja-kerja yang terlakukan walaupun dah siap separuh siap asalkan kerja tu dah berjalan contractor boleh claim dekat klien as work done Tiga, kos barang yang telah dibeli oleh kontraktor anti termination date. Se contohnya, kontraktor terminate 1 Februari 2020. Tapi kontraktor dah beli semen sebanyak 2 tan untuk pada untuk construction tu pada pada bulan 1. Jadi kontraktor boleh claim barang tu. Okey, last but not least, clause 26.3 and PEM it explain and describe about the contractor also given the right to retain all unfixed good and material which may become clients of employer properties as specified under for clause 14.0 clause ni juga bagi tahu yang contractor boleh juga ada pilihan untuk bagi tahu yang ada barang-barang yang belum dipasang lagi untuk dijadikan hak milik klien. Sebab apa dah tak ada guna kat projek itu untuk guna dia untuk projek lain. Hanya projek itu yang gunakan. Okay. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Amar Aziz bin Ruslim and I will continue on our presentation for the next topic which is event and consequence of default by the government. Generally, this clause focuses on how the contractor may claims and consequence on government default and effect for not fulfill their obligation. Under this clause have a de event of default which is if the government fails to perform or fulfill any of its obligation which adversely affect work, contractor may issue a notice specifying the default by government and also requiring the government to remedy the same within the period specific in taking into account the nature of the remedy. As for termination, if the government fails to respond to the notice within the, st the stipulated period time, the contractor have the right to forthwith terminate this contract by giving notice to that effect. Next is the consequence of the termination. Under the clause 55C, I think government should pay contractor if terminated are the value of 
all were carried out up to the date of termination. Amounts payable in respect of any preliminary items so far as the work or services comprise a certain therein has carried out or performed and a proper proportion of any such item which have been partially carried out or performed. The third is cost of materials or goods reasonably ordered for the work which have been delivered to the contractor or of which contractor has legally labelled to accept delivery. Such material or goods become property of government you can such payment being made to contractor. For the fourth one is a sum being amount of any expenditure reasonably incurred by contractor in so far as such expenditure has been recovered by any other referred to this sub clause. For the avoidance of doubt, the party agree that the contractor shall not be entitled to any other form of losses such as loss and loss of profit, damage and claims. If the government has received the notice by the contractor and failed to act within stipulated time, the contractor has the right to immediately terminate the contract. Next, I will continue on for the next for the last topic, which is certification of termination cost. In this class, it's mentioned that the SO able to make an accurate assessment of the ultimate cost to the government of completing the works after the government has made an arrangement for the completion of the works. There are many reasons for terminating a construction contract. Some of the most are non-payment by the owner or contractor, non-payment, non-performance by the contractor or subcontractor, timeliness of performance, lack of communication, or simply an, an inability to get along. This issue should be addressed in a construction contract. According to PWD Clause 56.1, it clearly states that when the event of default happens, then the SO may issue a certificate or also known as certificate of termination cost by stating the completion cost and the final contract sum. Second, due to the termination, government will have to take a full responsibility about any of loss or damages such as if there are any timeliness of performance which can lead to an additional cost. Clause 56.2 in PWD Clause 56.2, it has stated that what he has stated what are the sum, cost, or expenditure that must be included in the completion of cost. It is comprising of five things, which it, which is the sum previously paid to the contractor, the sums paid or payable to other contractors or person engaged by the government, sum paid to the con to subcontractor or suppliers under Clause 9. 61 of PWD. Clause 61 of PWD is about the payment to nominated subcontractor or supplier. The fourth is the cost or expenditure incurred or to be incurred on cost charge incurred by the government and last is the amount of direct loss or damage caused by the government due to the termination due, due to the termination. Next is clause 56.3, which is the final contract sum. In this clause, it states that the amount which would have been payable under the contract and other sums which, which the government might be entitled under the terms of contract to deduct from the original contract sum must be included in the final contract sum. The final contract sum comprises of the following amount. A. The amount which would have, would have been payable under the contract of complication. B. Any other sums which the government might be entitled under the terms of contract to deduct the original contract sum. Next, completion and cost final contract of sum 
shall be different in the certificate of termination cost because if the contract sum is less than completion cost, the contractor need to pay back the government as been mentioned in clause 56.4 until 56.6 of PWD. In 56.4, mention that the certificate of termination contract shall state the difference between the final contract sum and completion. In this slide, we've shown that if the final contract sum is less than the completion cost, then a debt payable by the contractor to the government. However, if the final contract sum is greater than the completion cost, the debt, a debt payable by the government and to the contractor. Next is the clause 56.5. In this clause, the certificate of termination cost shall be binding and conclusive on the contractor as to the amount of loss and specific. While in the clause 56.6, it states that the allowance shall be made when a certain the amount to be certified as cost as expense incurred by the government and for cost of supervision, interest and depreciation on plan and all other usual overhead charge and profit, it will be incurred incur if the works were complete by the other contractor or persons. That's all from us. Thank you for listening.